Hey, Essentials families, uh, just want to give you a quick video about what we would have studied or gone over in class yesterday on Tuesday, week 16 of Essentials. The first thing we would have reviewed for our parts of speech would have been nouns and pronouns. So uh, in your guide, it just uh, emphasizes that because we're all second years, uh, at least, that we really need to be going over the nouns uh, and verb charts because there is a noun and verb in every sentence. So that's really important to keep practicing those charts. It seems like everyone has chart A down, so uh, you can move on to those. But also add the pronouns chart once you get uh, the noun and verb chart. So uh, just go over with your kiddos what is a noun, the noun usages, and what is a pronoun, uh, and um, the different types of pronouns if you want to go that far. So that is our review for this week for our parts of speech, nouns and pronouns. Now for our uh, diagramming and uh, um, sentence structure, we are, we were, we are going over um, the sentence pattern S-V-T-D-O-O-C-N. So that's subject, verb transitive, direct object, object complement noun. And now you see why it's important to start your uh, essentials work with reviewing what a noun is. And so, um, so we're going to use the declarative purpose and um, let's see for these. Yes. So it'll be a complex sentence, declarative purpose. The pattern is S-V-T-D-O-O-C-N uh, for this week. So an example of just the pattern, S-V-T-D-O-O-C-N, would be from our uh, song, God Called the Light Day. Let's see, that was from, Gen that's Genesis 1. That was like a cycle 2. Anyway, this is a perfect example of the S-V-T-D-O-O-C-N pattern. So you'd want to go over, and this is in your guide, this sentence is in your guide, so it goes over everything as well. So you'd want to go over who or what, go through your question confirmation, who or what is this sentence about? It's about God, so that makes God our subject. What's being said about God? He called, so that's our verb. So he called what? He called the light. So that makes light our direct object. Now, you've got this other word here, day. So he called the light. What did he call the light? What did he call our direct object? He called it day. So an object complement noun, which is day in this sentence, changes the name of the direct object as a result of the action in the sentence. So because God called, he called the light. And what did he call it? He called it day. So this is an object complement noun. Now, day is a noun, so that's important to point out as well because it's a person, place, thing, activity, or idea. Yes, but in the sentence, it, it functions as an object complement noun. So this sentence is in your guide to practice the pattern only. Now, we want to use our structure of complex. So the other example in our guide is, let's see. All right. You write it real quick. You. Okay, so the example is Jesus, who made you an heir, made me a saint. Okay, so this is the, an example of our new pattern, S V T D O O C N in a complex structure. So again, you always want to start with your question confirmation. So who or what is the sentence about? It's about Jesus. What's being said about Jesus? Well, he made. He made what? He made me, right? So that becomes our direct object. And that's a pronoun used as a direct object. So then you could backtrack to your review of nouns and pronouns. Now, Jesus made me. He made me a saint. That is our independent clause in this sentence. 
because remember, complex sentences have both an independent and a dependent clause. So Jesus made me a saint is our independent clause. So you would want to work through that. Now, saint, I became a saint or me became a saint as a result of Jesus's action. He made, right? He made me. He made me into what? A saint. So that is an object complement noun because saint is a noun. Okay, so then you've got this, who made you an heir? That's our dependent clause, which makes this a complex sentence. So it's a who, which clause. It starts with a relative pronoun. So it's going to be adjectival, and it's going to describe Jesus. Jesus who made you an heir. So what, who or what is this clause about? It's about who, because when you have a relative pronoun, it's our subject of the dependent clause. What's being said about who? Made. Made what? Made you. So you is another direct object, right? A pronoun as a direct object. Then what did he make you? An heir. Oops. That should be an heir. Sorry, grammatical error there. So um, heir is also an object complement noun because as a result of who making, you became an heir. Okay, so you equals heir as a result of the action. It's pretty complicated stuff, but um, the guide goes over it much more eloquently than I do. So let's look at how we would diagram this sentence. So we have our complex pattern, we have our, no, 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 complex structure, and then we have our SVT, DO, OCN pattern and in a declarative purpose. So let's look at how we would diagram that quickly. Always want to start with your T, and because you have a de dependent clause, you're going to have two T's. So you'll start like this, okay? First on top is always our independent clause, right? So we will start with our subject to the left of the T, which is Jesus. Now, what's being said about Jesus, our verb was made. We already decided that when we first looked at the sentence. So Verbs go to the right of the T. Now, you want to diagram your direct object next. He made what? He made me. You've got your straight line for direct object. Now, what did he make me? What did I become as a result of his action? I became, what did I become? A saint. So, this is how you diagram object complement nouns. It looks a lot like a line that we've used before for predicate nominatives. And it, if you'll just point out to your students that it points back to me because I became a saint as a result of this action. So this is an object complement noun. Now I've got my article adjective underneath. We go through that usually every week. Now, when we diagram our dependent clause, uh, it's, it's a adjectival, so it's going to describe a noun or pronoun. In this case, it describes Jesus. So I'm going to make my dotted line from Jesus to my subjects, oh, hi, Ranger, of the dependent clause, which is who. Our relative pr pronouns are always the subjects of our dependent clauses. Okay, so what's being said about who in our dependent clause? Well, made again is our verb. Okay, so verbs again go to the right of the T. Now there's an, there was a direct object as well. In the dependent clause, it's you. So I'm gonna use my direct object line, straight line. I'm gonna put you right after. See that? Now, just like we did in our independent clause, we're going to put our object complement noun right after our direct object. And it was air but it's important that it tilts back, it points back to the direct object because that's what you've become as a result of the action. All right, and then we have an article adjective, and. So this is how you would diagram complex structure, SVD, DO, OCN pattern, and the declarative purpose. And again, this is a sentence in your guide that is a perfect example of what we're doing now. So let's see. We reviewed nouns and pronouns. We went over our new structure, uh, 
no, no, our new pattern with complex structure, which we've been working on for a few weeks. And let's see if there's anything else that we need to go over. Um, I think that's it for our grammar. So that is grammar this week. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always email me. My internet's working, so I can get your emails. Anyway, please reach out if you have that. And now we will move on to our writing.